This is Richard with JR Propo, and this is the fourth in a series of videos regarding how to set up a new helicopter model in the JR T44 transmitter using the JR Tags Mini 3 axis fly barless system. In the last video, we set up the T44 transmitter so that the flight mode switch would control the dual rate and exponential functions for aileron, elevator, and rudder. In this video, we're going to quickly confirm that the throttle and pitch curves are also controlled by the flight mode switch. We're going to set up a throttle hold switch, and we're going to set up a stick activated countdown timer. We're going to begin by turning on the transmitter, then from the home screen, pressing the L button to go to the function list. In the function list, in the center of the screen, we're going to scroll to where it says throttle curve. Highlight and click the roller. Again, we see the all servos hold screen. We press yes. We can either do this by pressing the C key over here or by depressing the roller. Now we're in the throttle curve screen. On the left, we see the word norm. This tells us we're in normal mode, which is the first position of our flight mode switch. If we click the flight mode switch to the center position, we'll see ST1 for stunt one and ST2 for stunt two. And for the moment, all of the throttle curves are the same, but this just confirms that we do have control over them through the flight mode switch. At the upper right, you'll see pitch curve is highlighted. Now I can back out to the list and scroll down to pitch curve and enter it, or I can simply with pitch curve highlighted, click the roller, and now it's changed from throttle curve to pitch curve. Again, I see the word normal, and I'm going to flip my flight mode switch. You see it changed to S ST1 for stunt one, ST2 for stunt two, and this tells us that the flight mode switch now has control over the pitch and the throttle curves. We're going to press the L button to back out to the functionless screen. We're now going to scroll down to the bottom center of the screen where it says throttle hold and click the roller. Once again, it asks if we want all servos to hold. We're going to click the roller for yes with yes highlighted. Now we're in the throttle hold screen. Now on the upper left, you'll see the word inhibit. So we're going to scroll to that, highlight it, and click the roller. Throttle hold is now almost active. We're going to scroll over to the right where it says switch select, highlight switch select, and click the roller. This is the screen which we're going to select which switch actually controls the throttle hold function. The default throttle hold, which is the one I like, is the upper rear of the transmitter. So we want to keep it there. We're going to scroll down until we find hold switch. Under hold, you'll see two boxes labeled zero and one. This is where we're going to determine which position of the switch actually activates throttle hold. So we're going to scroll to the one, which is the position that's toward us when we flip the switch and click the roller. Throttle hold has now been set. Now right now throttle hold is is set to hold at negative five percent throttle movement which is almost always enough to cut the throttle and hold it both when you're doing an auto rotation uh, after you've landed and want to carry the helicopter back or before you take off when you carry the helicopter out. If you need to increase this you can scroll to it, highlight it, and click it and you can, scrolling to the left, give it a larger percentage. We're going to leave it at 5% because that almost always does the trick. We're going to press the L button to back out. We're going to scroll down to the monitor function. Over here we're going to check to make sure our throttle hold is working. So hit monitor, highlight it, press the roller. I'm going to raise the throttle stick and you can see the First, at the top left, you can see throttle is, is moving up. I'm going to flip the throttle hold switch. 
throttle drops down to negative 5%. The throttle hold is now set in the T44. At this point, we're going to press the L button to return to the function list. We're now going to set up the stick activated down timer. While still in the function list, we're going to scroll over to the word system list, highlight and click the roller. Then we're going to scroll to the center of the screen, the second entry down, which is stick position switch. Highlight and click the roller. We're now in the stick position switch menu. There's actually a total of six different switches that can be activated through the stick position switch menu. There's two pages. We're on 2.2 right here. I'm going to back over to page 1 slash 2. We're going to go to stick position switch zero, highlight where it says inhibit, and click the roller. Now this gives us a list of the four stick axes that are available. Throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. We want throttle. We're going to scroll down to throttle, highlight, and click the roller. Below stick position switch to zero throttle, we see position off, another line which H for high, high throttle, inhibit, inhibit, and L for L for low, inhibit, inhibit, and below that a graph. I'm going to start out by looking at the graph. You'll see on, off, and on right above the bar graph. We're going to modify those. Scroll down to the most left-hand appearance of the word on and highlight it. Click the roller. Now scroll over to the center appearance of off, highlight it, and click the roller. Now we're going to scroll up to where it says inhibit directly to the right of the L. Notice inhibit appears tw twice, but we want this one. Highlight and click the roller. We're now going to start scrolling to the right, and as we do so, you'll see the graph moving to the left. We're going to go to about 90% here, and that's where our throttle stick position timer will start operating. So now we have a stick position switch set up that will start at any setting above 10%. But at this point, it doesn't control anything. We're going to press L to back out to the system list. We're going to scroll over to the function list, highlight function list and click, and we're going to scroll to timer, which is in the center of screen 2-2. Highlight the word timer and click the roller. There's three timers available on this screen. None of them are set up to operate right now. We're going to go to timer one, highlight where it says inhibit, and click the roller. We're going to scroll to down timer, highlight down, click the roller. This is where we can adjust the duration of the timer. If we want to fly for, say, five minutes on an electric helicopter, we're going to scroll to the right, highlight the default of 10 minutes, click the roller, and I'm going to back it down to five minutes. Click the roller, the time is now set. Directly below that is the start switch. I'm going to scroll down to that, highlight it, and click. And this is going to give me a list of all of the available switches that I can use to control the timer. Now, we just set up stick position switch zero and at the bottom, toward the left of the second page, stick position switch appears, SPSO. So we're going to highlight that, click the roller. We're going to hit the L button to back out to the timer screen again. And we're going to set the stop switch for the timer. Highlight stop switch, click the roller. 
Again, we're going to scroll down to SPSO, Stick Position Switch Zero, Highlight, and click the roller. We now have the start switch and stop switch for the timer defined as the stick position switch tied to the throttle. I'm going to press the E button to back out. Notice our timer on the right. The number appears five minutes. I'm going to raise the throttle. It starts counting down. It doesn't matter which flight mode we're in. When we drop to 10% or less throttle, the timer will stop. Raise it above 10% and it will start. In the next video, we're going to go into a little bit of detail regarding throttle and pitch curves. Thank you.